Hello and welcome! I've been painting sunflowers in watercolour this month, but today I'm changing it up a little bit with a spot of line and wash. I really enjoy incorporating a bit of line and wash technique because there's something rather satisfying about putting in that, that lovely dark line. I do tend to draw exactly the way I paint, kind of loose and sketchy, shall we say. Uh, so I tend to find that I appreciate the chance to have a little bit of help with the watercolour side. It kind of takes the pressure off the watercolour when you know you've got the structure of a line drawing to work with. And it takes the pressure off the line drawing because you know that all you need is some basic lines and you can choose how far you want to go with adding the details with the pen because most of the value work and obviously the colour is going to come from the paint. So it feels even more play playful to me sometimes. It's been a while since I used this line and wash technique and I've rather missed drawing with a pen. And I have to be honest, this isn't my first drawing of the day. Oh no, I did another line and wash painting this morning but I made a rather huge rookie mistake. So I chose not to show you that one today, but perhaps I will. Let me know in the comments if you can guess what that rookie mistake was and if you would like to see that particular sunflower painting. Time to add some paint. And I'm starting the way I always do, putting a little bit of clean water here and there in the area I'm adding colour to. And I'm starting with green gold, one of the, my favourites in my palette. And I just love the way that cascade green runs into the damp area and the gold area all by itself. I could watch that all day long. I'm repeating that same green gold. I think, in fact, mine is called green yellow, but it's the same sort of thing. Um, and I'm putting that in those the tips of those sunflower petals, the parts where I'm expecting the light to be. And I'm using that lovely reference photo to guide me. It's so much fun building up these colours. And I'm going to go through all the ranges of yellows and oranges that I have in my palette, building up the tones, to bring some shape and dimension to those petals because one of the things that's so delightful about them is the way they curve and overlap one another and they're kind of transparent so where the light is shining through them they're very pale and where they overlap one another the colors get a bit darker so that's going to be rather fun to paint it's kind of what attracted me to this particular image in the first place and one of the other things I do love so much are those the, the uh, green bits at the base of those petals, which in this particular sunflower you can see on the right hand side at the top there. Now very often I don't hesitate to go straight in with the darkest darks into the centre there, but the, this particular sunflower seems to have a slightly lighter centre. You know, sometimes you see them in the, the centre is that rich sort of ebony, almost black colour. Uh, but this one's got a bit more subtle colour variation and not quite as dark. And I also um, always like to take up any opportunity I can to pop in the translucent orange that I happen to have in my palette because that is such a glorious colour. And you can see the petals are still damp, the yellow ones. And the orange from the center is slowly making its way up those petals. And I'm rather delighted with that because that is in fact an area that needs to be shadowed to kind of push those petals on the far left hand side back a bit. So I'm happy that that is moving up um, along the edge of those petals because that is doing a lot of the work for me. And I'm going to be careful about how that's drying and I'll be going back adding little darker patches but it's something you want to kind of be a little bit cautious about with the timing to make sure that the paint has dried off enough that it's not just going to whoosh off and you'll lose all of your underlying layers. 
So it's a good chance to kind of move around the flower and build it up in other areas while you're waiting for a different section to dry. And if I'm painting sunflowers, well, if I'm painting anything actually, um, there's always going to be an opportunity to add a spot of purple. And purple is my very useful dark accent colour that I'm using to give that central seedy bit a bit more shape. I'm rather enjoying the way this sunflower is coming together. Um, I don't often paint yellow things. I mean, obviously this month I'm painting a lot of yellow things, but I wanted to take my time. And you saw me there lifting the page up to towards my face because I'm checking for the sheen on the paper. That's the indication, one of the very good indications of how damp the page is. And if it's shiny, you then you know it's wet and any paint you put down is going to whoosh about. So this is requiring some patience. So I decided to have a go at a little bit of a background. I want this painting to be about the sunflower, so I'm not going to go and put in anything too significant in the back, but I don't want it to just be sitting on a blank white page. And I do love the way watercolour paint moves in little damp sections of the page, so I'm just using that to create a background. So I've used the green gold in the top section and to me it's feeling like sunlight flowing in the back. And I repeated the same idea using my beloved cascade green in the bottom section um, to give it a little bit more weight at the bottom and kind of tie in with those leaves. And that's given me a, a chance to uh, dry those petals at the top because I want to create a little bit more division between the petals. At the moment it's pretty much solid colour with the odd line drawing but I want a little bit more depth than that so my trusty purple is going to be perfect for the job. Purple I think is a little bit too intense, too dark to put separations between the leaves uh, all the way out to their tips. So I'm just using my other darker shades, so my oranges, uh, and I've got a couple of different yellows in my palette, so I'm working my way through those. And the paint is still damp enough that the edges are softening, which is ideal, but not so damp that it is just whooshing about and uh, not creating separation at all. One of the tricky things is figuring out when to stop. As I'm doing this, I'm rather enjoying the dark sections. Those always pop out, uh, and that's that's what happens with the value. The value is what our eyes really pick up. We respond to the dark and light patterns. So I love this bit where the dark seem to be uh, jumping out and bringing this piece to life. But there is something slightly bothering me about this flower. It's one of those fresh and bright, exciting sunflowers, but it looks a little bit sad and droopy. And overnight, I figured out what it was. It's those petals at the top. So I think I'm going to bravely add some more. There's always a risk when you do this that it's going to look like something you've added on. But I always like to try out any ideas I've got because why not? If you don't experiment you'll never learn and figure it out. Also it's rather fun and you've already painted the painting so why not? Um, of course there's the chance that you might quote unquote ruin it but it's just a piece of paper. Let's have a go. So I'm starting with my pencil just to see if I can add the uh, petals that I think are missing. They are at an angle. The uh, head of the sunflower is rotated a bit, so I decided that is the section that was missing. Now I also want to make sure that I'm not putting those little petals in all um, perfectly parallel to one another because that is not the way they are in nature. So I need to make sure they're wiggly and that's why I started with the pencil that gives me a chance to make sure I'm happy with the angle and placement of these little petals that I'm adding at the last minute here before I commit to them in pen. 
Of course, once I do that, I have to make sure I let the pen dry. Um, if you go and erase over the pen while it's still damp, you can make the pen streak. So I know that this is quite a fast drying pen, uh, which is lucky, but I will try and be patient enough to make sure that I don't go and um, make a big blurry mess just because of my slightly damp ink. And I love my kneaded eraser, um, but I think the uh, white eraser will actually be cleaner, so I will probably give them both a go. And I'm being extra cautious, a few more sips of coffee before I bravely go in and erase those lines. And sometimes one of the problems with the kneaded eraser, apart from the fact that it shakes your table when you use it, is that it can, if it's collected some little dirty bits of ink from your last erasing, sometimes that can spread onto your um, watercolour paper as well, which is rather unfortunate and something you want to avoid. So the way to clean the kneaded eraser is just to play with it a bit like it's one of those uh, slime stress ball things. Right, so we have our extra lines in place uh, and I want to be careful to make sure I use the same colours that I did yesterday so that it doesn't look like I've added on extra petals at the last minute. Uh, it looks like I knew what I was doing right from the start. So it was the green gold that I used on the tips there, uh, as well as some of the other yellows in my palette. And I will do the same as I did before, uh, trying to create some separation between them by putting light edges against dark edges where the petals overlap. And that'll be a little bit easier because I know the ones from last night are obviously perfectly very much dry so I can just be a little bit more careful than I'm used to being when I paint around them and I know that the the paint I add is only going to go into the damp area. Yes I'm happier with that already. Looks a little bit less forlorn and bedraggled now that it's got uh, those extra petals. I must admit last night when I was I had this picture in my head of the sunflower that I painted and it kept reminding me of you know there's a lot of people who've been cutting their own fringes or if you're in the States I'm sure you call them bangs uh, and if you cut your fringe your bangs too short you look like this sunflower uh, before I added the extra petals don't you think? So she's got a much better haircut now uh, and she's a happier little sunflower. I don't want these extra petals I've added to have uh, a different level of detail so I'm going to make sure that I do go that little extra mile and add uh, some depth with the dark purple that I used. You don't need a lot but at the moment those top petals aren't looking quite as um, defined as they could and just a few little uh, drops of dark purple in the right spots will bring that little sunflower fringe to life I believe. The next hardest part is going to be stopping because I'm having fun with this particular painting. I really enjoyed it uh, so I'm in danger of um, overworking it which is just making unnecessary marks that are making the painting worse not better. So somebody stop me please. Let's call that done. Thanks for watching. See you next time.